Well, hello, it's Caitlin from Leave Me Alone Plans, and today I'm going to be doing a care guide on how to take care of your variegated bird's nest fern. Now, if you have a non-variegated version of this plant, overall the generalities of this video will be helpful for you as well, but of course, um, today here I will be showing you my variegated one. Now, I feel like I have to say that I had thought about making this video for a long time because when I purchased this plant there wasn't a ton of care videos or I don't think there's actually any care videos on variegated bird's nest ferns. Um, and the reason I was a little nervous to make it is because I don't feel like this is probably a plant that I care to um, care for to the best of my ability. Um, you know, sometimes it just isn't looking the happiest, but over the last couple months, I think I'm starting to really get the hang of taking care of this guy. But of course, if um, you have additional tips in the comments down below, don't forget to leave them because, you know, as much as I like to share my knowledge of plants, I'm sure there's a million people out there who know a thousand times more. Now with that said, let's just hop into it. So one really cool thing about this plant is that it is considered an epiphat. And what that means is that in nature, this plant isn't necessarily just going to grow in the soil. Basically how it's going to grow is, um, you know, when the spores for this fern or, um, you know, whatever part of the plant starts growing, uh, it typically will latch on to kind of like the crook of a tree or maybe a rock um, or something like that. Basically, it will just attach itself to a surface, but not necessarily be growing inside of a typical growing medium. And um, for that reason, when I got this plant, I kind of just have it in this little small pot and it's basically just sitting on top of some soil in there. And really that, that has seemed to work for me so far. So. Um, you know, you of course can plant these guys in a more traditional potting medium, but um, do just note that, you know, if you decide to not go that route, that is how they grow in nature. They will just, you know, grow without soil. Now, if you're like me, you get a little nervous at the thought of taking care of ferns because the thing is, is these plants like to um, stay very moist and they like to have a lot of humidity. You know, they're used to a very tropical environment. And as you can probably see on here, I do have some of those crispy pieces, which aren't doing, uh, you know, the best humidity wise. I actually have this guy typically living next to my humidifier. So the local humidity over there is somewhere around like the 40% range. Um, in my house in general, it can range anywhere from like 10 to 30%. I am here in Arizona, so that humidity drops pretty low in our area if I don't have the, those humidifiers cranking. Um, you know, of course, if you live somewhere like Florida, then you might have a little bit of an easier time with this plant. But do just note that if you plan on getting one of these, uh, try and place it somewhere that, you know, it is going to get kind of that constant stream of humidity. Otherwise, you might start to get some of these crispy little edges like I have. Now that kind of leads us into watering. So, um, as I had mentioned, I really don't, I just had this guy sitting on top of soil, basically. And because of that, um, for me, he can dry out pretty fast. Now these plants are going to like to be moist, so I go on with water um, quite honestly almost every day just because those roots are um, pretty exposed and I just want to make sure that you know they're staying moist, they're not drying out, and that the sky isn't going to completely crisp up. Now if you do have this guy growing in a potting medium, a soil medium, you know, just something a little more traditional, then um, you will want to keep that medium on the moister side, but of course, as always, don't just soak the soil, um, it can lead to root rot and just, you know, isn't always a wonderful thing. Again, like most ferns, um, you know, typically in their growing conditions, they are gonna kind of be more under that forest canopy, um, kind of towards the ground, where they might be getting more of a filter in direct light, so that's kind of what you're gonna want to emulate in your home, um, you know, not bring it into a complete sunny, like super bright area where it's getting that direct sun on it. It will burn the leaves. Um, but on the flip side of that, of course, you know, like all variegated plants, because um, some of those leaves in there do have, you know, less chlorophyll and they're just, you know, more white. 
you're going to want to give it a little more light than you would like a traditional bird's nest fern or any fern in general um, to kind of compensate for the fact that it is going to have to work a little harder to produce that energy, produce new leaves, and just overall sustain itself. So these new leaves, they're actually going to be called fronds, and um, when you're looking for where they're growing, I for some reason initially thought that they were growing like on the outside, but they actually come from the inside of the plant. And um, you know, you'll kind of just start to see them emerge. They are very delicate, so you know, uh, try to avoid like going in there and picking and prodding at them, and you know, trying to look and see if it has like good variegation. But um, overall, yeah, they will just be kind of coming out of the center of that plant. You'll see them start to unfurl. Uh, I think this one I have, he's kind of a newer leaf right here, so I'm not sure if you'll be able to see, but he's still um, kind of unrolling a little bit, and uh, yeah. So as for propagation on these guys, um, unfortunately these are not really the easiest plants to propagate. So um, traditionally how they will be propagated of course is going to be through tissue culture in a lab where you know, they'll take um, some kind of cutting or um, section from the plant and then they will grow it in uh, more of like a cultured lab setting and uh, kind of produce new sprouts from there. Uh, additionally they can be uh, propagated through spores. I will be honest with you, I have no idea how to propagate a fern through spores, so um, you'll probably have to, you know, watch another video on that if it's something that you're interested in. But typically, you know, when these plants are created and you're getting new versions of them, um, they are more so something that's going to be done by a professional and typically, you know, it's not just going to be as easy as like cutting one of these leaves off and letting it root up, unfortunately. Now a fun fact about this plant, it is actually uh, currently the most expensive plant in my collection. Um, I had really just impulse bought this plant one day, it was um, before I even knew honestly anything about bird nest ferns and I had seen it in a purge. Um, it had been passed up by the OP and I swooped in and got it. I got it for $65, which honestly I feel like is a pretty fair price for these. Um, and really I couldn't be more happy with it. I think what really drove me to this plant was, um, and I hope it picks up on camera, but really these leaves, like the variegation on them just makes them look like a little feather in there. So, um, super gorgeous plants. I probably don't even take care of it to, you know, a tenth of the degree that it could be taken care of. So if you're watching this video and you thought that uh, my plant is a little ugly, then please don't come for me in the comments. But um, I hope that this video was at least a little bit helpful to someone. Um, you know, like I said, I was a little nervous to make this video, but um, I think there's always something to learn from, you know, just seeing how other people care for their plants, what works for them, what doesn't work for them. Uh, one thing I think I forgot to mention was in terms of watering. So uh, when you go in and water these guys, you're not going to want to water into this center cup. Um, it can actually cause them to rot in there and it's just not going to be good for the plant. So instead, um, opt to water around the plant as opposed to into the center of it. Of course, if you want to just bottom water it, that might be the easiest method. And same thing for fertilizing. Um, you're going to want to avoid putting fertilizer, um, be it you know, liquid or beads or anything like that, directly into the cup of this plant. Uh, if you had questions about this plant that I did not address in this video, of course, as always, drop them in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer them. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.